John chapter 4, and we will be picking up at verse number 5. Amen. Amen. John chapter 4, at verse number 5. And the word says, Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, Thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou this living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water, springing up into everlasting life. The woman saith unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Our thought this evening, or this morning rather, a lot of church lately, excuse me, my thought this morning, the thirst is real. Amen. The thirst is real. Amen. Let us pray. So many people in this world are enduring a dry life. The thing about Israel, Israel is an oasis in the midst of a wilderness. You cross outside of the borders you find yourself in a dry and weary land. Yes, sir. You find yourself in a desert. When the children of Israel crossed over the Jordan into the land of Israel, they crossed out of a wilderness, by the way, that was named the wilderness of sin. They crossed over the Jordan, which is the river of death. They crossed over death into the promise. And when they got there, they found a land that flowed with milk and honey. I say that to say this, outside of God's promise, you find yourself in a dry place, in a place of death, in a place of destruction, in a place of want and need. So dry is this place, so dry is this life outside of the promise that it moves people to seek for something to refresh their souls. Relationships are dry. There's no love anymore. There's no trust anymore. Men look at women and wonder, when is she gonna get me? When is she gonna take me for everything I have? Women look at men and wonder, how long will it be before he shows his true color? 
He's saying he loves me now, but how long will it be before I find out he's loving somebody else? Relationships drive. Because there's no trust, there can develop no real love. Finances are dry. Economy is not what it should be. Jobs are few and far between. If you find yourself without one, you are in a dire situation. Having to jump through the different hoops of life, trying to get some help. Help from the government, help from your family, help from your friends. Amen. And for many of us, there's no help to be found. For that very reason, so many people turn to a life of crime. But a, a life of crime only drives your life out more. So many people turn to the bottle, but alcohol only drives your life out more. So many people turn to drugs, but drugs only dry your life out more, sucking the life out of you, sucking the joy out of you, destroying friendships, destroying families. Amen, somebody. The only answer that I know to give you was found in the text. So then let us turn to the text. Back at verse number seven, it said, now Jesus has come to that well, the well of Jacob, it's in Samaria, at verse number seven, there cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus is sitting on the well and here comes a woman. Jesus saith unto her, give me to drink. Now here they are, they're out, they're out of ways from the city. Jesus and his crew have rolled into Samaria, preaching their gospel. And Jesus said, I'm going to wait right here on this well. Y'all go on down into the city and get some food and come back. And while he's there, this woman comes out and he's asking her to draw some water. Now here's the thing, water is a preserver of life in a dry and weary land. If a person has wandered through the Sahara Desert, there's nothing on their mind other than water. If you found a man who had wandered through the Mojave, there's nothing more important to that man right now than water. Because if we allow ourselves to dry out, we will die. You can only go so many days without water. I believe science says your body is something like 85% water. You need to continually put more water in in order to sustain life. Water is a preserver of life. Water refreshes. Some of us have some plants at home right now that are in bad need of some water. Plants slumping over to the side. Plants turning brown and dry. Yeah. I hope your plants are going to thank me today because you're going to go home and water your plants. Some of our lives are slumped over and dry. Some of our lives are turning gray and dying. Some of our relationships are slumped over and dry. All right. Some of our finances are slumped over and dry. Some of our health is slumped over, amen. But water is a refresher. Water will rejuvenate. If you go home and put water on those plants today, by tomorrow you might look and see those plants standing up strong again. And if you can get some water for your soul. You'll find out that it can refresh even your life. Water, water cleanses. If you want to get your clothes clean, you put them in the washing machine. You do not pour Coca-Cola in with your clothes. That might work on your engine, amen. But for everything else, you need water. All right. When you wash your dishes, you don't wash them with mud, but you need some fresh, clean water. Water 
cleanses. Water is even prescribed for the cleansing of your soul. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. And Peter said, repent, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins. That's the water. We were saved not by works of righteousness, but by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. Water. So water is symbolic for spiritual cleansing. And it's a real cleanser in reality. Water quenches thirst. Or another way of saying it is water satisfies. Amen, somebody. Anybody ever, anybody ever been out in the sun on a hot day and a Pepsi might sound good, but after you drink some pop and it tastes good and it feels good while it's going down, but now your mouth becomes more dry than it was before. Do you know why? Because God created the perfect thing to quench your thirst. Yes. And he put it on earth in abundant supply. Yes. Water. Water satisfies. Yes, Amen, somebody. Yeah. All right, well, let's jump down to verse number nine then. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Now, what I want you to understand here is this. At this point, there had been 700 years of conflict between the Jews and the Samaritans. Well, the northern ten tribes of Israel had been taken away captive into Assyria so that the land would not be overrun the Assyrian kings then brought some people back into the land to live there and to keep it and to work it and to tend it. But the people he brought in were mostly Arabs. Uh But these Arabs mixed with the Jewish people and this mixed people, half Jewish and half Arab, were the people who were called the Samaritans. Now, the Jews did not like the Samaritans because they said, you're not completely Jewish. Uh And Samaritans didn't like the Jews because the Jews didn't like them. You know how that works. If I don't like you, then you don't like me because I don't like you. Amen. And so they even worshiped separately. The Samaritans developed their own version of Judaism, complete with their own version of the scriptures, wherein there were some corruptions. The most famous of the corruptions of the Samaritan scriptures was in the Ten Commandments because they added into the Ten Commandments, thou shalt worship at Mount Gerizim. Yes. Mount Gerizim is in Samaria. Yes, it is. So when you read in the gospel and you see the question, where should we worship? The Jews say we should worship there in Jerusalem. Yes. We say we should worship here on Mount Gerizim. You understand what it is. They they wrote it into their text. It was an interpolation into the scripture. And so there was was conflict about this because the Jews are holding to the original text which says that they were to worship at Mount Moriah where Uh the temple was in Jerusalem. So here we see that Jesus in Samaria was literally in enemy territory. So when she says, how are you going to ask water from me? The Jews don't have any dealings with the Samaritans. You have to understand, this is like a blood being deep in crypt territory and asking a crypt lady for a drink of water. The only thing you likely to catch around here is a bullet. What are you doing even talking to me? Our two crews don't get along. Amen. Verse number 10, Jesus answered and said unto her, if thou knewest the gift of God 
and who it is that say, saith to thee, give me drink. Uh -huh. Thou wouldest have asked of him. We, he would have given you living water. If she only knew that she was talking to the one who spoke and water sprang out of nothingness and proceeded to exist. If she only understood that she was speaking to the very God who said, let there be light. Amen. And even though he hadn't yet created a son, somehow light just came out of nowhere. Yes. If she only understood that she was the one, that he was the one who created the expanse of the universe, yes. who flung the stars into the sky, who created the Milky Way, mm -hmm. who gave the earth a moon to surround it to let us count our months by. If she only understood that she was talking to the one who put the water in the well. Yes. If she only understood she was talking to the one who was the progenitor of Jacob, yes. who led Jacob to put the well in the ground to draw the water that he put in the ground. Ah. She only understood she was talking to the one who made water flow from a dry, hot, and dusty rock twice. Ah. And Moses struck the rock. And the second time God told Moses to speak to the rock, Moses struck the rock again. Yeah. And even though Moses didn't follow the exact directions, God was gracious to him and made the water flow two times. Yeah. If she only understood who she was talking to. Sometimes we talk to Jesus like we don't know who he is. Uh -huh. We pray and we act like the thing we pray for is too hard for God to do. But there's nothing that is too hard for our God. Right. Your money's not right. You're talking to the God who made the tree from which they cut the money. They cut the paper. Amen. Your relationship isn't right. You're talking to the God who designed love. You're talking to the God who made man and woman. You're talking to the God who created marriage. Your health is poor. You're talking to the God who created health. You're talking to the God who owns every disease and has the power over when it comes and when it leaves. You're talking to the almighty God. Amen, somebody. Amen. At verse number 11, the woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Oh, wow. Living water. The well is deep. You don't have anything to draw with. How are you going to catch this living water? Living water was an expression commonly used for running water, such as spring water yeah, yeah. or a river, a body of water with a constant flow. Yeah. Now, there were some wells that drew from an underground spring. This was not an underground spring. This was a regular well. And so he would have to have a bucket that could go deeper than the well they were already drawing from. Because uh -huh. the well they were at was a well of stagnant water. Yes. It's a well of sitting water. sitting water. So now, if this is a well of sitting water and you don't have a bucket at all, how do you plan to reach all the way down and grab the living water? How do you plan to reach all the way down and get the running water? Wow. How do you plan to reach all the way down past what is naturally there but she once again she doesn't understand she's not just talking to a regular man she's talking to the man that is naturally super and he's able to do the supernatural amen somebody living water living water has flow to it she thought Jesus was talking about fresh water as opposed to musty well water she was thinking on a natural level when the spiritual word was going forth. But Jesus wasn't talking about flowing water as opposed to sitting water. When Jesus said living water, he wasn't talking about running water, he was talking about life 
giving water. Now here's where you have to catch the rub. You see, God is talking on a whole nother level than man is catching. I hope you're catching it now because we're talking about something beyond H2O. We're talking about something that will refresh the soul. We're talking about something that will revive the soul. We're talking about something that will cleanse the soul. How can you reach it? It can't be reached by natural means. From whence will you get this living water? Living water is the presence, the essence, the spirit and mind of God. Living water is the presence of God for your life. The flow of his spirit in the soul of a man. How many of you know there's a flow in the spirit of God? The spirit of God is never stagnant, but the spirit of God is living water. It's rushing water. They have a move to it. Amen. The spirit of God will take you from this level to that level. It will take you from glory to glory. It will take you from faith to faith. It will take you from strength to strength. It will take you from level to level. It will take you from dimension to dimension. The living water of God will cause you to shift into greater. Amen, somebody. Nothing that is moving with God can stand still. You can't move and stay at the same time. You can come as you are, but you can't stay how you were. Amen. God is going to move you into another place in life. That's how you can tell when somebody's saved for real, for real. Yes, the initial sign of receiving that living water, the initial sign of receiving the Spirit of God, The first sign is that it causes us to speak in unknown tongues, just like they did in the Bible. But now, what is the lasting sign? The lasting sign is change in your life. The lasting sign is that you're continually progressing in the Spirit of God. The lasting sign is I used to lie and I don't lie anymore. The lasting sign is I used to steal, but now I don't steal anymore. The lasting sign is I used to sleep around, but I don't sleep around anymore. The lasting sign is I used to hate, but now I love. I used to talk about folk, but now I lift people up. I've been changed by the living water of God. Has anybody been changed? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord. Yes, Lord. The flow of his spirit in the soul of man. God's blessing and favor, eternal life more abundant. Relationship with the Father is the water that our souls need. Everything else we search for, everything else we look for, will fail to satisfy your soul. All right. Let me say it again. Anything else you are searching for, anything else you're trying to use will fail to satisfy your soul. Money can't do it. Fame can't do it. Houses can't do it. Cars, clothes, none of these things can do it. Popularity can't do it. A career can't do it. A husband or a wife can't do it. The only thing that will satisfy your soul is to reconnect your soul with the creator of your soul. You need living water. Amen, somebody. Verse number 13. At verse number 13, it says, Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Here Jesus recognized that the Samaritan woman's thirst was more than just physical. She came to the well for some water, but she came for something more than just some water. Her body was thirsty, but her soul was more thirsty than her body was. I thank God for a divine appointment. 
Some people show up at the well and they just think they came for some natural water, but don't know that they came for the spiritual water that would cause them to be satisfied. Somebody came into the house of God today just trying to satisfy somebody you promised that you would come, but you didn't know. You showed up on this day on purpose. God makes no mistakes. There's nothing such as a coincidence. God wanted you to be here today to hear about the living water. That will quench the thirsting in your soul. Ah, we thank God. He's got what we need. He saw the bitter disappointment. He saw in her the hurt feelings, the rejection, the fear, the despair. He saw in her the broken promises, the embarrassments, the shattered dreams, the loneliness. I want you to understand God sees in you today. He sees through you. He sees through your nice suit. He sees through your pretty dress. He sees even through your fake smile. God sees who you really are. He sees how you really feel. He knows what you really need. And he's here today to pour out his water on you. Somebody say, pour it out, Lord. I need your living water. Thank you, Jesus. He sees the scars on your heart. He sees the destruction that has taken place in your mind. He sees how your own family has destroyed your self-esteem. He sees how your broken relationships have destroyed your self-image. He sees how you have been crushed by your finances. He sees how you've been hurt and wounded in your past and is still affecting you to this very day. When you encounter people who are mean and bitter, they weren't born that way. We get mean and bitter because we've been through mean and bitter circumstances. People get hard because they've been through hard life. But God sees through all of that. He sees who you really are. And here's what's beautiful. Even though he sees who you really are, he loves you anyway. Even though he knows what you really think, he loves you anyway. Even though he remembers everything you did and he knows the real reason why you did it, but he loves you anyway. He knows that we have hearts that are desperately wicked, bathed in sin. He knows. That even when we held our tongue shut, when we held our mouth shut, we wanted to cuss him out. We wanted to punch him in the face. Even though we put it back on the shelf, you wanted to steal it. He knows, but he loves you anyway. Who can love you like Jesus? Can't nobody do you like Jesus. Can't nobody do you like the Lord. Nobody, nobody. Nobody who wouldn't love a God like that, a God who loves you in spite of who you are. Because let me tell you something, ain't neither one of us up in here worth two pennies, amen. Everybody up in here has done enough to land your soul in hell forever, but he loved you anyway. He loved all of us. Let me include myself. He loved all of us enough to save our soul. I thank God if you don't, I'll thank him. Yeah, 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 yeah. I thank God for the living water. Because he should have left me out there dry and thirsty. But he gave me drink. (laughs) He let me drink from the well of life. (laughs) He let me drink from the well of salvation. (laughs) He has restored my soul. (laughs) He's turned my life around. Ah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. The woman at the well was thirsty. Not only was her body dehydrated, but her entire soul was parched. The thirst is real. Thank you, Jesus. 
Everybody wants to be happy. The thirst is real. Everybody wants to be made complete. Help us, sir. Help us. The thirst is real. Thirst is real. Everybody, deep down on the inside, wants to know that they're in good terms with God. The thirst is real. Everybody wants to be healthy. Thank you, Jesus. Healthy. The thirst is real. She was thirsty for friends. Thirsty for respect. She was thirsty for forgiveness. She was thirsty for true love. She was thirsty for a purposeful life. She was thirsty for a genuine hope. She had had five husbands and the one she was with now was not her husband. She was thirsty for something real. The thirst is real. We're thirsty for the same things. Thirsty for love, thirsty for connection, thirsty for friendship. Ah, we're thirsty to be respected. We're, we're, we're thirsty to belong. Everybody wants to belong somewhere. Yes. That's why it's so important we show the love of Christ to one another. Because everybody wants to belong. The thirst is real. Yes. It's not in your mind. You're not alone. You're not strange because you have a desire. The thirst is real. And God allowed it to be there in your soul. He allowed your soul to be dry and thirsty and yearning for something more for a reason. So that you might come to him. The fountain of living waters. The thirst is real. So many people today are dying of a thirst that cannot be quenched with natural H2O. And so they shuffle and stumble back and forth. Trying to satisfy their souls with muddy water. We run to the well of pleasure, but it does not end the thirst. We claw our way over to the well of wealth and dip our buckets in. But this too only provides temporary relief. So we slump to the well of entertainment. But this well is only a momentary distraction. It quenches nothing. From well to well, drugs, alcohol, promiscuity, out of control shopping, engaging ourselves and wrapping a whole life up in our careers, boyfriends, girlfriends, gambling, theft. We travel in blind circles and find no relief in these muddy waters. The devil is advertising every day, all day long. The devil is out there on your television and on your radio all day long saying, I got water. Come get water. But when you get there, all you find is mud. Oh, we got two for five. Two for five. Muddy water. Uh Uh-huh. Shot specials. Uh Uh-huh. 25 cent shots. Muddy water. Uh Uh-huh. I got the player price on the zip. Muddy water. What you doing, girl? Why don't you come over and watch a movie? Muddy water. Muddy water, it won't satisfy the thirsting in your soul. You know ain't nobody watching no movie at 3 o'clock in the morning. Muddy water. Thank you, Lord. The only thing that can quench the thirst deep in the soul of a man is the living water which is only given by Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. Jesus Jesus is the only source of the living water. Jesus is the only one who can satisfy your soul. Jesus is the only one who can fill the void, the empty space in your heart. Jesus 
Jesus is what you need. Thank you, Lord. Isaiah 12, 2 and 3. You can write it down. Isaiah 12, verse 2 and 3. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also is become my salvation. Therefore with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation. When you can say God is my salvation, how beautiful that is. Because Matthew chapter 1 and verse 21, I think that's what we talked about last week. Uh huh. When the angel Gabriel told Joseph that Mary was going to have a baby, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. He called his name Jesus because he would save his people from their sins. But the name Jesus literally translates in Hebrew to Jehovah, our salvation. Behold, God is my salvation. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength. So every time you say Jesus, you're saying Jehovah, my salvation. And if Jehovah is your salvation, if your hope and trust is in the everlasting God, if you place your faith in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, if you're trusting in the same God who helped Moses, if you're trusting in the same God that led Joshua, if you're trusting in the same God that protected David, if you're trusting in the same God that John the Baptist prophesied about, if you're trusting in the same God that showed up in a fiery furnace huh, with three Hebrew boys, huh, if you're trusting in the same God huh, who showed up in a lion's den huh, with a man named Daniel, huh, if you're trusting in the God of salvation, huh, then with joy shall you draw water huh, out of the wells of salvation. Huh. I thank God. Huh, I thank God. Huh, I thank God. Huh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and with joy <laughs> shall you draw water. <laughs> not just water, <laughs> not just satisfaction, <laughs> but with joy. <laughs> she said, how are you going to get this living water? <laughs> you don't even have a bucket. <laughs> but the Bible said, <laughs> with joy shall you draw water. <laughs> if you're not experiencing the refreshing of Jesus, <laughs> You need to make it up in your mind. I'm going to operate with the joy of the Lord. Somebody ought to get happy. Somebody ought to start praising God. And with joy shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation. Every time you say glory, you get strength. Every time you say hallelujah, you get strength. Every time you say thank you, Jesus, you draw water out of the well of salvation. Somebody ought to clap your hands and say glory. Thank you, Jesus. With joy. Yeah, 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 yeah. With joy, with joy. See, when my soul was dry, I didn't know nothing about joy. I was chasing after happiness. But see, joy is better than happiness because happiness is connected to what is happening. So when I didn't like what was happening, I didn't have happiness. But joy is not based on your circumstances. Joy is based on the faithfulness of God. So if I'm on the mountaintop or in the valley, I can have joy. Yeah, if I'm in a fiery furnace, I can have joy. If I got plenty of money, I can have joy. If I'm broke, I can have joy. So let the devil bring what he will. You don't have to give up. You don't have to throw in the towel. You don't have to run away. But you ought to turn around and look back at the devil and say, I still have joy. I still have joy. After all the 
things I've been through, I still have joy. With joy. With joy shall you draw water. You know why I stayed in church after I got saved? Because I found that the joy is over here. Yeah. They try to portray the world like being in the world is having fun. Like drinking and getting high and sleeping around is having fun. Like stealing and running around and acting a fool is fun. But I found out fun is being righteous. Fun is knowing where you're going when you die. Fun is having fear taken away. Fun is knowing that my needs will be met. For my God shall supply all of your need from his riches and glory. I'm glad because on this side I found joy. With joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation. I got one more other scripture for you. John 7, 37 and 38. You can write that down. John 7, 37 and 38. In the last day, that great day of the feast, this is the eighth day of the Feast of Tabernacles, Jesus stood and cried saying, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Not only will God give you access to the wells of salvation, but God will cause you to become a well, and he'll let other people drink from you. Not only will God bless you, but God wants to make you a blessing. Not only does God want to save you, but he wants to save you to save others. God will make your life have meaning. And he'll give you rivers. Rivers. Rivers of living water. Not a trickle of living water. Not a gulp of living water. Not a single river of living water. It's plural. Out of your belly shall flow rivers. Multiple streams of living water shall come out of you. And not only shall you receive life, but like Jesus, you become a life-giving spirit. When you draw out of the well of salvation. When you stop running to muddy waters. When you stop running to resources that can't help. Ah, all the world has is broken cisterns that can hold no water. Ah, they give empty promises of satisfaction. But only Jesus, only Jesus can quench the thirst. The thirst is real. And I want it quenched. The thirst is real. And I want it satisfied. And I haven't found anywhere else I can do it. Except in the pages of this book where I found the God of the universe who spoke and separated the waters beneath from the waters above. And he designated the waters of the spirit for our souls. Somebody say amen. amen. The flow of God's presence in your life is the living water that will preserve your life in a dry and weary land. The flow of God's presence in your life. Somebody say the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Ah, is that living water that will cleanse your soul. Somebody say the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is that living water that will refresh your life daily. Somebody say the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost is that living water that will quench your every thirst and satisfy you and give you fulfillment for your life. You need the Holy Ghost. Yes. Have you received 
the Holy Ghost since you believed. You need the living water because the thirst is real. There's so many people who believe in Jesus and they're still thirsty. Now, what kind of sense does it make to come to the fountain and not drink? All right. Because you have to understand, what Jesus brought for us is more than just the ability to arrive at the fountain. He intends for you to drink. Yes. He intends for you to get full to you overflow. Yes. He intends for you to be full of his Holy Ghost. Yes. So a lot of people go to churches all over the world and they feel the spirit on them. They jump up and get happy. <laughs> Yes, sir. Amen. Preach, preacher. <laughs> and they go home and they lead the Holy Ghost there in the sanctuary. God wants you to be full of the Holy Ghost so that the Holy Ghost will go home with you. Amen, somebody. If you don't understand anything else, I want you to understand this. Salvation is to be full of the Holy Ghost. It is to be filled with the very spirit of the living God. Salvation means you have drank of the living waters. Not you have come to where the fountain is. It means you have drank of the living waters. Not you hang around folk who talk about the living water. It means you are full of living water. And if you have received anything less than full Bible salvation, you have been robbed. This is your chance to get it for real. God wants to fill your soul with the Holy Ghost. Jesus said, if you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Ghost to them that ask? You have not because you ask not. All right. If you're here today and you're ready to receive that living water, this is your opportunity. The thirst is real. And God will quench it for real. Give me this water. That's what she said in verse number 15. She said, give me this water. I'm thirsty for your presence. Give me this water. I'm thirsty for your guidance. Give me this water. I'm thirsty for your love. Give me this water. I'm thirsty for your power. Give me this water. I'm thirsty for Jesus. We invite you now to come and receive this water. If you are saying in your soul, give me this water that I might not thirst anymore, we're asking you to rise and join us now at the altar.